Britt Hume is, of course, Fox's senior political analyst, and for good reason. He knows all. Uh, what do no, you think of the speech? Right. <laughs> the old, no, I've seen wisest. What do you think of that? Well, I'll say this about it. It was Trump, sort of vintage Trump, right? The crowd loved it, right? It was, it was utterly reminiscent of the campaign rallies. And he loves this sort of thing. And these kinds of events are arguably what brought him to the White House. The problem yes. is that you can campaign your way into the White House, but you can't campaign your way into a successful administration. So I have no objection to his going out and having these rallies. Right. And, and perhaps he can find a way to have them in places where, you know, as West Virginia might have, where he might have gotten a, a, a favorable vote from Shelley Moore Capito, senator from West Virginia, by appearing with her and the rest of it. But, you know, broadly speaking, I think the, the things that beset his administration at the moment cannot quite be solved by going out and campaigning. Well, the irony is listening to that speech, which I really enjoyed and I agreed with it for whatever it's worth, um, and it sounded very much like a campaign speech. The one person in his administration I'm aware of who actually agrees with all that, I know many who don't, many. But the one who does is Jeff Sessions, who's also the one under fire today. I, I wonder if this is a message that that agenda is you know, no longer operative. I don't think so. I think, I think the president has a peculiar concept of what the attorney general's job is. He seems to think the attorney general is some kind of goalie for him to protect him from, you know, whatever may come his way from forces that he finds inimical to him. That's not the job of the attorney no, general. It's, it, it isn't. And the attorney general's job has always been a little apart from other cabinet jobs. The attorney general has to be the man who enforces the nation's laws uh, involving everybody, including the president. Right. And, and a strong attorney general helps the president by, you know, doing that job well and at times when required giving the president advice as to how he, the president, should stay out of trouble. Um, the, the president, this whole recusal uh, argument that the president makes that he, that he should have uh, let him know he was going to do it, well, maybe a couple of days ahead of time maybe he should have, but, but the circumstances that gave rise to his recusal hadn't really uh, hadn't really come about. They had not at the time when when the president appointed him. So it's it's you know it, it doesn't really make any sense. His case against Sessions on the on recusal doesn't really make any sense to me. None of this does, and you can see it getting fixed. You can see the president and the attorney general meeting tomorrow or the next day and deciding nothing good's coming out of this. Right. Doing a pretty good job. Let's just move forward. The the disaster would be if this begins. A seer, you know, if this causes disruption, well, and you see other people. Some, some, I think it's fair to say that something's going to have to be done. This can't. The attorney general may stay in office and dare the president to fire him, but no attorney general or any other cabinet officer can survive for very long when he clearly does not have the confidence of the president. So right. if they don't patch this up, Sessions will either sooner or later be gone. And then there begins a whole process that you discussed with your guests earlier about who he could ever get to replace him under these circumstances. And then the question arises whether, you know, others in the administration who may be on the outs at the moment may choose not to stay. They may find Trump, as this episode with Sessions may illustrate to them, an impossible person to work for. That's a very dangerous situation. So we're hearing that Rex Tillerson, who has been out today anyway. He's down in Texas, apparently taking a couple of days right, off. Right, he's coming back tomorrow. Right. Um, so clearly, I think that's designed as a sign to suggest I'm not going anywhere. Well, yeah, but, you know, we don't know. And, you know, the, the one thing you have to be careful with, it, with this sort of speculation is that there have been so many people in the White House in particular who have been reported to be on the way out for so yeah. long. And the only one in the White House who's left is Sean Spicer, and he apparently resigned, right, in the shakeup. Um, but the president seems to think that, that the essence of serving him in the cabinet and in the White House is to be simply personally loyal to him. That isn't all there is to it. I think you have to be, people have to be loyal to the president. That's, that, but, but the right. best way to do that is not simply to, to indulge his every whim and mood. No, it's to make sure the things that he ran on, that people voted for, right. that ordinary people wanted to happen, right. happen. Yeah, to, to support his agenda and try to advance and it. And not subvert it. So right. when, you know... Other cabinet level people say, say, we're bringing more refugees in. Really? I don't remember anybody voting for Trump for that reason. No, I agree. Britt, thank you very you much. Bet.